I'm going to ask a few, I'm going to throw out a few words or thoughts and just react to them. Okay. Um, Airbnb, Uber. Uh, two companies who are totally reinventing their business. Okay. Manufacturing. Something very complex. Yep. Judo or jujitsu. Uh, a way you want to fight if you're smaller. Yep. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's, a, he's a big guy inside. Yeah. Um, Zika. Uh, an awful virus who hurts so many children. So many people know Conan O'Brien grew up across the street from here, and his dad, Tom O'Brien, is one of the top infectious disease uh, guys. So uh, we'll, we'll circle back to infectious disease. Uh, Silicon Valley. Crazy people. Yeah, OK. <laughs> um, a company, you know, we gave an award uh, earlier, uh, Lifetime Achievement Award, to the VisiCalc team. Uh, Microsoft has done pretty well with software. What, what do you think of Microsoft and, and what they've done with software? I think they enable us to just change how we, how we work, how we think, how we create. Great. Um, blockbuster, blockbuster movie, blockbuster, yeah, blockbuster, billion dollar blockbuster, what, what do you think? Sometimes good movies, sometimes not so good movies. Yeah. Uh, patience. That's why I get up in the morning, Paul. Yeah, you wanna help patience. Um, uh, unicorn, what do you think of the word unicorn? Strange animal. Yeah, great. So um, you have lived in the U.S. four times. This is your, mm -hmm. your fourth time. Mm -hmm. uh, you grew up in France. Uh, in 2008 to 11, um, you were running a company that did pretty well. Uh, you had 6,000 employees. Did they all report to you? Not all. Thank, no, okay. thank the Lord. You were the CEO of a company with 6,000, $5 billion company. Uh, it was number one in space, blood diagnostics. You spent two years in France, and you moved here and ran it for three years. When you were done running that, you could have just bought an island and done nothing. Is, is that true? Or f not that that's your inclination, but is that true or false? Kind of true. Kind of true. So you didn't need to work another day in your life. You had, you had helped a lot of people in the health space, but you decided to, to jump in. Is that right? Yeah. So um, uh, in 2012, uh, we started TEDx Speaking Street. In 2014, we asked you to, to give a talk here. Mm -hmm. How, what was that process like in terms of helping you uh, with this little company that you've been leading recently? So I was very helpful in two ways. I think the first way was, you know, we do something that's very sciencey. Uh, we do messenger RNA, which I guess some people in the room don't know what it is, so I'll come back to that later. You will. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we just are trying to invent a new way to make medicine, just totally new ways so that your body is making the medicine not in a factory on the other side of the planet, but your body makes your own medicine when you're sick. So just totally crazy way to do it. Uh, so that was very helpful to help me figure out how do I explain this, this crazy concept to people who don't know the biotech space. The second way where it was very helpful is because it was on the web and on TED that I had so many employees, prospect, you know, coming to the office saying, hey, I'm coming from an interview, I already saw the TED talk, I think I get it. Same thing with suppliers, partners. Uh, so that really helped us find a, a structure to explain what we do to people who do not know what we do. So third party validation. Yes. So you have, you have 500 employees. So those of you who don't know Moderna, uh, some companies raise money. They've successfully raised $1.9 million. I misspoke, I misspoke, $1.9 billion dollars. Right now, yeah. Right now they're valued at a 5 billion dollars. And they are a unicorn. They are the Airbnb of biotech. You are looking at the Mark Zuckerberg of biotech. I don't know if he would claim that, but many people have referred to him as that. Um, so again, he didn't go live on an island. He said, "I want to do something remarkable." And um, you uh, had an interesting path. You went to business school, and while all your peers went into the dot-com space, Phil Sanderson was up here as a guy who helped uh, create Pandora. He did dot-com um, space. You went into manufacturing. Mm -hmm. And was that a smart choice, or did that kind of derail you? Or, or uh, yeah, what, 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 how did that play out? Again, I've always been in love with making medicine. and. I thought it was important for me to know how actually to physically make medicine. Because if you look at it, all the pharmaceutical company, all of them, in the last 20 years, all had big FDA issue. We saw Genzyme here, you know, mm -hmm. a few miles away from here. Uh, and it always put them on their knees. And I was like, it's crazy to spend so much time 
in the labs making those medicines if you cannot find a way to make them with the right quality to get them to patients. So I wanted to spend a bit of time learning, working in a factory, how to do that. And that has been something that has helped me all my so career. So it's a good investment for you to be a, a, a black belt uh, <laughs> judo uh, CEO of a biotech firm. So I asked you about judo and jujitsu. So those of you who don't know, and you will know M, um, uh, RNA, can you talk a little bit about, you know, we talked about how I, I see it as judo. Like, like and this is a software of life. Just, just talk a little bit about this big idea that pulled you away from running the, the company you had been running to, to be part of this startup. It's now 500 staff. Uh, in the early years, he spoke here, and it was help away. The talk helped bring in some of the talent you have now. But talk about the big idea, because that is an idea uh, worth spreading and worth putting in action. Yeah, so if you look at the, the dogma of biology, the way your body works is you have your DNA that's basically as all the recipes for all the proteins in your body, around 22,000. And every time your cell needs a protein like insulin, what it does, it makes a copy of that information, instruction, in something called the messenger RNA. And that messenger RNA makes a copy from your DNA, goes inside your cell, and makes insulin protein. And your cell does that a trillion times per day, every one of your cells. So the way since the 70s the biotech industry has made protein medicines is they took the human gene from your human DNA, they put it in the bacteria, and they made the bacteria make the protein. The way we're trying to change how we do medicines for patients is we're trying to make directly the messenger RNA between your DNA and your protein. So we make the messenger RNA and we inject the patient, the messenger RNA, and their body by itself makes the protein that's going to cure them. That's what we're trying to do. So like judo, he's putting something in your body to use your body to, to, to do successful things. Um, so a lot of uh, my wife's uh, uh, father, my father-in-law worked at uh, uh, a biotech company that was doing very well in the 80s and 90s. And it's a very different time now for those companies. And I, I interacted with them when I was at MIT. And a lot of these companies they feel the pressure of trying to create these blockbuster drugs. And I asked you about blockbuster movies. So you're sitting on a technology that can have big impact. Mm -hmm. And I know you have, um, you have a strategy on how to have impact. Do you feel the pressure to create a blockbuster drug that can underwrite everything you're doing? Like, how do you see the uh, blockbuster mentality playing out at your company, or is it not? Yeah, actually it is not. Uh, we're trying to do the right biology so that we can get the right medicine to patients. The big problem with the pharmaceutical industry is it's a trial and error business. They try millions of things for one thing to get approved. Uh, we think that a much better way to do it is to, using the software of life, using messenger RNA, is to design the right protein so that you're going to be cured once and for all. That's kind of how we think about it. And so we don't believe that you need a billion dollar drug so that you can make a profit, so that you can survive. We think that you could have much smaller medicines because diseases are much more complicated. And we think that if you can do a drug much faster because you use the software of life, if your drugs can be much cheaper because you need a very little amount of messenger RNA, every time we give you a messenger RNA medicine for one molecule of mRNA getting into your body, your body is going to make a thousand copies. So it's a thousand fold improvement. So you just need a very little to just help your body to do what it needs so that you get back healthy. Like Jerry Maguire, help me help you. Yes. I don't know if you quote that at work. I but, don't. Um, <laughs> you don't. I should. Uh, yeah. Um, so, you know, I'm in the uh, augmented reality space by day. We're creating a headset where you see three-dimensional objects. It's a new tech in a new space. You're new tech, and you're trying to, you know, make it mainstream. How hard is that? How easy is that? What keeps you up at night? Um, you're onto something that can have real impacts. How's it going? So, I mean, it's going really amazing. We now have 12 drugs that are in development. Uh, we already have 250 uh, people that have been injected with our medicines in Europe, in the US now, uh, in Australia, hopefully next week. Um, we should very soon start with a Zika vaccine in clinical trial. We just filed to the FDA. And to tell you how amazing this technology is, thanks to the team that have built it, is we started working on the Zika vaccine last December. That's December 2015. We filed to US FDA 
uh, a month ago to get the authorization to start clinical trial. That is 10 months from having nothing, just an idea of let's do a Zika vaccine, to being ready. That process in big pharma takes five to six years. This is just how crazy this is. And we have done 15 of those vaccines with just different you know, viruses. And so uh, things are, are going really well. The thing I worry the most at night is we clearly have a true platform because the difference between the mRNA for insulin or for the Zika vaccine is just the sequence of the letters. Like in software, you have zeros and ones. In messenger RNA, you have four letters. And so the difference between those two products is just the letters. So it takes a lot of time and a lot of research to get the first drug to work. But then the second, the third, the fourth, they go very, very fast. We now make a thousand different messenger RNA drug every month. If you will go come to see us you know, in Candle Square, we have just a huge farm of robots that just crank messenger RNA. So you see the upside of a platform is speed, scalability. The thing I worry about is the downside, because now that we know this is safe and working in human, and we're gonna be publishing the clinical data early in the new year, is I worry about what can we mess up? Because if you make a mistake, you pick the wrong chemistry, you make a manufacturing mistake, all the drugs are wrong. That's the downside of a platform. So what I spend a lot of time with the team now thinking about is what can go wrong, because we can see our path to having dozens of drugs getting to patients. You know, so, so small medicine, some for big markets. We don't really care. We're not solving for the size of a market. We're solving for medicines that don't help people. Uh, and the whole team is really committed by that mission. But the thing I worry a lot about is what are the things that we don't know? Mm. Because it's a new technology. Nobody has done messenger RNA drugs before. So you cannot take a book written by MIT, you know, how you do a messenger RNA drug or how do you build a messenger RNA company. We, we are inventing it. And a bit like we saw before with the mountain, which is we're trying to think always what could go wrong. Every time you decide do I go right or do I go left, try to be thoughtful about it because if you knew everything, it's much easier to make a decision. But not knowing is what makes it very really hard for us. And what makes it very hard for the team because this is a company that has a lot of ambiguity. So it's all about judgment. So this is a company that requires a lot of collaboration because none of us, starting with a CEO, none of us knows it all. And so we have to work together as teams to listen to each other and try to figure out what is the path forward so we don't fall from the mountain. Sure, and you, know, you just mentioned 12. You know, most companies would do one or two. The, the people who gave you the 1.9 billion probably didn't think you would be you know, having so many, um, so many uh, uh, experiments going on concurrently, but that shows that the technology is creating these, these new, new ways of, of approaching it. Um, do you think there'll be many copycats? I know iRobot, you know, I asked you about Silicon Valley, and a lot of people go there. Um, you know, this is sort of the Silicon Valley for biotech. Do you think there'll be a lot of copycats of what your company's doing? Uh, there's 70 uh, robot companies now in Boston. Uh, do you think you're kind of changing the vector of biotech by what you're doing? Yeah, so what is interesting is, because most things in biotech have not worked, if you look at the last 40 years, mm -hmm. you have two camps of people, some that still think this is crazy and most probably will not work. Yep. So I can't wait to share with them the data in the new year yep. because <laughs> I have seen the data. Yep. Uh, and the other side is trying to emulate us. So you have small companies, you have some big companies trying. Uh, the thing that I think makes us quite unique is how fast we are learning. Mm -hmm. We realized maybe a year into the company that because nobody had done messenger RNA drugs, that it was gonna be a 20 year learning cycle. If you look at any technology, mankind has touched ever, it's around 20 years that it takes you know, steam engine, semiconductor, mobile phone, pick your favorite technology. It takes 20 years for us as a society to kind of maximize what this technology can do. Now, Moderna is five years old. I still think we are still on day one. Yeah. We are still learning so much. Uh, most recently, Stephen, who runs all of our science, told our board of directors, we have learned more in the last four months than we learned in the last four years. And that is true. So I a can true learning company. So my last question, I know your, your mom's here and your two daughters uh, are here. Where do you think this goes in 10 years? We, we think at, at TEDx Speaking Street intergenerationally and kind of um, thinking about community. What, what's the impact 10 years out of uh, the great work that your, your team's doing? So 
the goal I have for the company uh, is to do something that has never been ever done, is in the next 10 years, I want 100 medicine to go to patients. Uh, and some are going to be for very small diseases, some are going to be for very big diseases. Which the business model doesn't work for the big pharma. Correct. Yeah. Uh, That's a big idea. And we really just care about getting drugs that are going to impact families, help people. That's how we define success. And we want to make sure, given the breadth of a platform, that we don't try to be naive or to be arrogant, to try to do everything ourselves. We're working with partners, you know, AstraZeneca, Merck, Vertex mm -hmm. for you know, cystic fibrosis. The judo. Jiu-jitsu. Correct. We're trying to figure out some of the drugs that make sense for us to do, yeah. but some drugs makes more sense for us to partner because those other companies have a clinical, research, regulatory capabilities for that disease. That will take us years to build, and we will always have a chance to build it wrong. Yeah. But because we care so deeply about those drugs getting to patients, yeah. we are just solving for that. And so if somebody else is much better fitted, then they should have a drug. Great. So thank you for not buying that island and retiring. Um, I love your line, software of life. Um, and in two years, uh, clear your schedule. We want you back here to give us the next update. Ladies and gentlemen, the CEO of Moderna. Thank you. Thanks, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.